Well, thank you all for being here this morning. Before I start, I want to introduce uh, the man off to my right, Major John Cummings. He is the major that oversees the jail. He's the number three in command here at the Sheriff's Office. I'll give you an overview of what took place here last night. doors behind me into our jail lobby, our correctional lobby. Of course, our cameras and our correctional officers inside saw the vehicle enter the lobby. They came out and were confronted by the suspect who was wearing only a lady's top. He was disrobed other than wearing a lady's top. He, uh, at that point, threw two rubber snakes and multiple cell phones into the lobby, into the actual structure here and then started pouring motor oil all over his vehicle and then the floor where he was threatening to light the car and himself on fire. Our outside deputies, our road patrol deputies, responded uh, relatively quickly, encountered the suspect who was not cooperative and uh, gave him multiple commands which he did not listen to and eventually he was tased and taken into custody. Uh, it took them a while to, to calm him down he was extremely uh, amped up, and while, he, while our deputies were interacting with him, he kept saying things like, the devil told me to kill everyone, uh, and he kept uh, sharing his disdain for President Donald Trump. Fire Rescue responded. They had to respond to uh, check out his injuries because he was so amped up. They gave him multiple doses of ketamine, which did not uh, sedate him. He was transported to Mark Memorial South where he was given more medication to sedate him. And uh, at this time, he's been released. He's back in our jail for multiple counts of aggravated assault on our deputies. Uh, a little bit about our suspect. I'll give you his name. His name is Joe Leedy. He is local to us. However, he is transient. He's borderline homeless, living in and out of the vehicle that he crashed into our facility here. Um, he has never, to our knowledge, ever been arrested. He's never been in this facility. There's no nexus between our jail and Mr. Leedy. Our deputies, however, have interacted with him, uh, giving him trespass warnings and interact with him as he is, again, homeless uh, out in the public. Uh, the last thing I wanna mention real quick before I turn it over to questions is, uh, while he did penetrate the initial door to the lobby, at no time was the jail itself ever compromised. It's, this jail is built extremely well there's a uh, double layers of concrete wall behind this door. So uh, the jail and our jail staff and our inmates were safe throughout this entire encounter. With that, I know you have a lot of questions. I'll try to answer them. Uh, two questions. Can you spell Leedy for us, please? Yes, yeah, so the question is, can I spell Leedy? Yes, the last name is L-E-E-D-Y. And then was he intoxicated or under the influence of anything before the academy at the time of the crash? I can tell you what I know from being with him because I was here and I was at the hospital with him last night. We don't have blood results back, but he kept uh, joking and asking for more medication and, and laughing at the fact that we had to give him medication. And again, the, uh, the medication that a normal person would be sedated by was not affecting him at all. So that does lead us to believe he has built up a tolerance to different types of drugs. This is one of the more bizarre stories we've heard this year. How did the Sheriff's Office respond to something that is kind of out of the ordinary? especially when it affects you guys crashing through your jail? Well, the question is, this is a bizarre story. How does it affect us? What's our comment with it? First and foremost, we're thankful that none of our deputies were injured. Right behind this door, you have a dedicated group of individuals that come here 24-7 to keep this county safe and protect our inmates that are here. And he risked their lives. You know, they had no idea a car was coming barreling down this sidewalk. And if they were standing just behind this door, that could have potentially uh, affected taking their lives. So we're thankful that they're okay. And then, uh, you know, we're dealing with more and more people that are not stable on a daily basis. So this is just another reminder of, of uh, how dangerous our job really is. Do you suspect that this gentleman could have been like, or are you going to Baker Act this guy? Do you think that like, you suspect he had, I mean, obviously he appears to be, you suspect that he's been on some kind of right. drugs, but what about mental illness? Is that... So the question is, is there any mental illness? Are we going to Baker Act him? As of now, we do not plan on Baker Acting him. Uh, we're treating him more like he was under the influence of controlled substances. Of course, the major and his staff are monitoring him to see how he 
comes out of the, the drugs. Of course, he's been administered drugs to uh, sedate him. So as he comes to, we'll evaluate him more and then see where we go from there. He did not make suicidal statements. He made homicidal statements, but not suicidal statements. In terms of like the, the barriers or what have you to prevent, I assume vehicles from doing this type of thing, are you gonna be reevaluating that or perhaps adding some additional barriers to prevent this? Or yeah, so Will's question, a great question, uh, was are we gonna put barriers like bollards like we have at our main office over here? And the answer is absolutely yes. Unfortunately, sometimes we play catch up and we learn from our mistakes where our vulnerabilities are. So clearly we have a vulnerability here, but uh, within a short period of time, you'll see this hardened up. And how does this affect your operations in the short term while you guys kind of sort out this situation? So the door behind me is used 24 seven for uh, our correctional officers to come and go from work and they come and go again, literally 24 hours a day. Our bondsmen come in and out of here to help uh, release some of our inmates and then as the major and his staff release inmates uh, they come out again 24 7 throughout the night day and night so right now it is cumbersome for us uh, local traffic meaning visitors are not allowed into our jail we're hoping to have a makeshift door up by the end of the day and be quasi operational with a makeshift door by the, the uh, first part of tomorrow you were saying that he was saying some erratic things yes So the question was, uh, what was he saying when our deputies encountered him? He was emphatic that he hated Donald Trump. He did not make direct threats to him, but he just talked about his hatred for former President Donald Trump. He also kept emphasizing that the devil told me to kill as many people as possible. And uh, he, again, was borderline incoherent throughout our entire interaction with him and uh, made a lot of those statements over the course of several hours. How to spell Levy, the last name is it J O E or J O for the first name? Or? I'll have, uh, J O E. J -O -E. Yeah. Uh, okay. Will, the question is uh, what's the first name spelled? It's J O E. And how old is this guy? 84, 85. His birthday was 84. Sorry, we'll get you the affidavit. Okay. Uh, and we also have a video from the internal camera in the jail of the vehicle coming through, so we'll get you that after we're done here today. Just to clarify, was there anyone inside the lobby when it happened, or was there no one in the lobby, just people inside the building? So the question is, were there people inside of the lobby when this took place? There were no, uh, our correctional officers were in the building uh, just past the second wall in there. So they were within uh, striking distance of the vehicle, but they were not just on the other side of this door. There were no civilians or visitors in the lobby at that hour. Yes, the question is, are visitors allowed today? And the answer is no. Uh, but as soon as we can get things back operational, we'll let, allow people to come and go as they normally would. Of course, we're making uh, allowances for attorneys that need to come in, uh, bondsmen that need to come in and out. We're trying to do our best to facilitate all that to make sure that our inmates are taken care of and that our, our civilians that are moving in and out are taken care of. What happened to the vehicle that's being used? Is that under investigation? Was that taken away? What happened? So the question is what happened to the vehicle that crashed into this door? Uh, the vehicle was towed across the parking lot here to our crime scene lot where we can go through it. Hopefully uh, if there was drugs used in this, we see we get some indication as to motive, why, why he was here. As far as, you know, in the process of him kind of pouring the oil and making these threats, was there anybody around to rationalize? I know sometimes there's somebody to like talk the situation down. Was there anybody, I guess, around to be able to do that with him? So all of our deputies, so the question is, was there anybody that could talk him down? All of our deputies, including the major's uh, correctional deputies are CIT certified. They're used to dealing with people that are high on drugs or mentally ill. There was no amount of talking that calmed him down. Only force, the use of a taser, uh, put him in check. And then even again, hours after he was taken into custody, I was at the jail an hour and a half after he was at the hospital. He was still struggling with hospital staff. They were still struggling to sedate him, so he was uncontrollable throughout the entire process, regardless of who talked to him, a nurse, doctor, or a deputy. So, and just to clarify, we, we, it would be accurate to say that following this incident, you guys are going to take sort of additional steps to make it impossible for vehicles to 
I guess, do what this sure. gentleman did? Using some sort of barriers or what yeah. have you, is that accurate? Or? Yeah, so Will's question is he wants to clarify if we're going to harden up the facility so vehicles can't drive in. Uh, so the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, if you'll notice across the driveway, there's bollards that would prevent uh, vehicles from driving into the doors, which are closer to the, the parking lot. What are bollards? So bollards are concrete. They're, they're, uh, they're aesthetically correct, but they're really concrete balls placed in front of the door so a vehicle can't get to an entryway in our facility. So adding something along those lines to... Yes, we, okay. obviously we can't have this again. You know, we see where there is a vulnerability and our, again, our first and foremost concern is keeping our citizens and our deputies safe in here. And we're going to do what we have to do to make sure that this doesn't happen again. What do you need The question is, what's he being charged with? We'll provide you with the affidavit, but I know four, we're charging him right now with four counts of aggravated assault on our deputies who were inside in close proximity to that vehicle. Could there be more charges? The question is, could there be more charges? The answer is yes, depending on what we potentially pull out of his phone. And that's one thing I wanted to mention real quick. He did throw a cell phone into the lobby that he had hit record and was recording the entire incident. Of course, the phone was laying on the floor and didn't capture much. But for some reason, he wanted that phone in there while this incident took place. So as we go through his information, we absolutely could file more charges. Did he give any reason why the rubber snakes? The, the question is, did he give any reason why the rubber snakes? And the answer is no. He, he threw them in there again. He poured the oil over his car. He threatened to light it on fire, clearly not knowing that it wouldn't combust. Uh, but uh, his, his uh, statements were incoherent at best. So the question is, have we had vehicles come up here on this sidewalk before? The answer is no, or we probably would have been more aware of this scenario. Uh, you do see that, unfortunately, at, at uh, federal buildings, other government buildings. This has been done in the past. But again, uh, this sidewalk is so long and so far removed from the road, uh, clearly we had not thought of this as a vulnerability. I have one yes. more. Um, sure. I know you kind of mentioned that until you guys get that makeshift door, your operations are kind of different. Yep. Do you guys have a way of doing that? Is there somewhere that people should go to or handle differently? So if they need to reach the jail, they can. So the question is, is there a, a mechanism to reach the jail? The answer is yes, uh, on two fronts. If you're a lawyer, an attorney that's trying to reach your client, or you're a bondsman that's trying to come and go and help somebody bond out, they can call our booking number, 772-220-7222, and our correctional officers will facilitate that interaction. As far as visiting loved ones right now today, know that your loved ones are safe, they were not harmed or even in, in close proximity to the action, and uh, we hope to get regular visitation back up and running by tomorrow. So the question is, has he ever been booked in any other jail? The answer is, as best we can tell, this individual has no criminal history. He's never had any arrests by law enforcement, as best we can tell right now.